far as moving strategies go, there's some different ways you can do that. You may want to use a delay option along with the, any of the move options to facilitate a sale and, and to facilitate your move. Also, a note regarding litigation, which I mentioned. If you do any kind of litigation, it, it increases the motivation of your lender to work with you. Suddenly, you are a much higher priority because a litigation involves attorney time. And attorney time is very expensive for your lender. So it just increases the losses that much more, especially if they could lose and have a huge claim against them or have the balance lowered in some way and they lose that money. So um, any kind of litigation suddenly increases their motivation to work with you, especially to do a short sale and just get paid and cut their loss and get, get done with you. So a litigation is a good thing when you're looking to do a short sale, say. Also, when you're moving a short sale, which is, which is the main subject of what this course is all about, other than foreclosure, short sale is a great option. Short sale is simply where your lender agrees to lower the balance so that your mortgage can be paid off and you can sell your house. This is especially necessary where in places where markets have uh, fallen and they have in so many areas and people owe more than what their house is worth. Nearly every single lender does a short sale. Um, they have departments normally called loss mitigation departments. Sometimes it's handled by the collections department to negotiate lower balances on their own mortgages. Since we're talking about all the options for moving, you could maybe sell your house and pay it off in full. If you don't require a short sale, there's no need to do one. You know, if the market hasn't dropped below what you owe, then you can, you can afford to sell and, and pay everything off in four, full. As far as moving options, there's also options like the Cash for Keys program and Deed in lieu of foreclosure. There's also sometimes a, what's called a negotiated move, where which are similar to the cash for keys and deed in lieu. Basically what, it come, what a cash for keys program is, is you move out and you give the bank the keys to the property and they give you like a thousand dollars or something to get out so they don't have to spend any of the money to foreclose or anything like that. Typically they're going to request that you deed in lieu along with that, which simply means that you deed the property back to them uh, so they don't have to do a foreclosure. Now, a deed in lieu is not going to work in certain circumstances. If there's a second mortgage on the property, they have to foreclose whether you deed the property to them or not because they have to get rid of that second mortgage. In, in the case where there's judgment liens, there's anything else attached to the property other than the taxes and the first mortgage, you're going to have to be subjected to a full foreclosure. As far as credit issues or, or the effect on your credit, a deed in lieu is very close to uh, a foreclosure. They're very similar because they're both repossessions. One's just voluntary. So that's not that much difference as far as the credit goes. It does get your problem over with though you can move on. A bank can still come back at you for anything that they don't collect on, the, on selling the house after, the, after you deed the house back to them. So that's something to look out for. A short sale is always your best option because number one, you avoid that repossession. It does more than just affect your credit score. It also is a mark that's pretty serious as far as wanting to buy things in the future. A short sale is much, much better, and your credit will improve quicker after you've done a short sale than a, than a deed in lieu. Also with a short sale, you have an opportunity to negotiate any kind of deficiency so that it's not collected against you. It's just a very dignified thing to do as opposed to just let it go. There you have it. I've talked about Many ways as I can think of to stay in your house, to sell your house and move, and strategies for delaying the foreclosure on your house. I've included some homework for you below so that you actually get your value for this portion of this course. I want you to fill out the hardship worksheet that I've included below in a link. This worksheet is a standard worksheet. It's a Fannie Mae worksheet, which Fannie Mae is, probably owns more loans than anybody in the United States. So. Uh, it's a standard worksheet. Most lenders require something like it or this exact one. And it will help you kind of come to a moment of truth. It will help you evaluate your income versus outgo. Also, there's an equity analysis here so, to kind of help you understand how much do you owe and how much can you conservatively get in this market. Also, you need to think about is your hardship a long-term versus short-term hardship. Fill out this hardship worksheet. It's going to help you come to a moment of truth. 
by filling out this information. So that's why it's important to do the homework. It'll help you figure out your income versus outco. Obviously, that's important to see whether you can actually keep this house. It's very easy to, to hope and believe that you can do something, but, it's, but you don't want to do that if you just can't do it. You, know, you don't want to continue robbing from Peter to pay Paul. It helps to just put things down on paper and, and create a plan if you haven't already done so. You need to do an equity analysis. How much do you owe? That, how do you much do you owe after taxes? Because you, you may have back taxes, I don't know. After escrow deficiencies, what's your total balance on your mortgage and on your equity line and anything else that you have that you owe in the house? And, and think about how conservatively, how much will you get in this market? And that helps you know whether you would need to do a short sale or sell it. And is it really worth keeping a house that you're extremely upside down in? Also, you need to consider, is your hardship long-term or short-term? If you completely done with your hardship, you just need a little help to, to get started making payments, then yeah, you want to pursue one of the keep your house options. But one of the worst things that you can do is to fight to keep a house that even when your hardship's over, there's no way you can keep it as far as you know the payments go or something like that. You need to understand that and just move ahead and, and make a proper decision based on your knowledge of what reality really is. Some questions for you is, could you make the payment if your bank lender would just allow you to start making payments? Could you do that? With your current income, can you immediately start making the original payment amount on your loan if you didn't have to make any of the back payments? That's a good question to help you understand what you should do. Also, you have to do you want to keep your home? Maybe you don't want to. I don't know. Can you afford your home? Can you afford the home and still afford to eat? How many payments are you behind? Okay. Just, just ask yourself these questions and, and kind of think about what you actually want to do. And if you decide that you know, a short sale may be a good option for you and you've evaluated enough to understand, then, then go ahead and follow the link down below to go ahead and purchase this course in full.